So, uh, yeah, good afternoon, everybody. It's our 1 p.m. CET session with CoinRule. Um, it's funny, actually, we got some messages on our live channel. Uh, when is CoinRule on next? Uh, so uh, our dear analyst, Leon, has been talking with some of the people uh, on Twitch. Um, so uh, in order to be respectful for time, uh, we have now a session of about 50 minutes. Uh, we have uh, three mentors here who have already been in the previous session and they're continuing with their time to meet the guys from CoinRule. Um, Shlomo, if I can ask you a short intro to the guys in CoinRule and followed by Jaco and then Miguel. Go ahead. Sure. Uh, hi, Alec, again. Um, uh, Shlomo Amir from Israel. Um, I tech industry for over 30 years mostly in uh, machine vision, robotics, and nanotechnology. Uh, I took one company public. I sold another one to America in Germany. Uh, and today I'm uh, part of uh, Israeli startups that was part of Frankfurt Accelerator uh, program with uh, four uh, involved in the fintech industry. So good luck to you. Go ahead, uh, Jaco. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh... Yeah, I'm an angel investor and a financial advisor. I've been invested in, in more than 20 companies over the last nine years uh, and uh, have acted as a financial advisor for several companies in their debt financing, typically leveraging the equity investments. Uh, and I used to be a CEO and a partner in, in, in two software companies, which we both exited to bigger companies in the past. Terrific. And Miguel and then Michael Melinhoff just join us from the UK. Miguel, go ahead. A short intro. Hi, nice meeting you guys. Um, I am Miguel. I'm a uh, technologist. I worked in um, robotics, uh, financial industry for 10 years, um, working with banks, central banks, uh, exchanges in blockchain and cryptocurrency. Um, I'm currently working on custody with uh, an exchange here in Germany. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, Michael, uh, can you hear us? I will unmute you. Now you can talk. Ah, okay. <laughs> Hi. Uh, sorry for the delay. I had some trouble getting in. Um, Michael Mellinghoff. Um, I run a firm called Techfluence and we help fintech founders uh, find funding and uh, clients Europe-wide, basically. And um, yeah, went into London, came to London about five years ago, mentored there a lot for uh, Level 39, startup bootcamp fintech and uh, connected to Frankfurt and to Germany through the Fintech Germany world that I mainly run. Awesome. Thank you for joining, uh, Michael. Um, guys, uh, the floor is yours. Go ahead uh, and uh, present to, to the guys uh, what you're doing and feel free to jump in. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cool. Um, should I present the company quickly? It's like take a couple of minutes. Uh, today, if someone like me or a girl and us want to buy some coins, the first thing they do, they go on the market and they start playing with the cryptocurrency and the digital assets. And then after a little bit of work, they understand that it takes so much time. So they actually start looking for an automation tool on an algorithmic trading tool. And that's also been acknowledged by the, the economists in the issue in October, where they were saying that 90% of the market is managed by automatic bots. What CoinRule does gives back the power to normal investors, normal people to fight back big banks and big quant floor by giving them a very simple tool to automate their investments. Now we started with cryptocurrencies and in the future we are also expanding into other assets, traditional assets like commodity, uh, ETF, bond uh, and then FX. Um, so with CoinRule, uh, the, the selling point is that you can say, uh, if this, then that. The logic is very easy, is very visual. So you can say, for example, if Bitcoin goes down 3%, buy Ripple at this specific price. Then you can use several indicators, you can tweak your rule, you can test it on historical data, and then when it's all nice and you feel comfortable, you can press play and it goes on the market and play, um, trades on your behalf. The last thing to mention, the way it works, CoinRoot is a layer on top of different exchanges. So at the moment we connect on 12 exchanges, the most famous one, so we cover 90% of the market. And it's very safe because CoinRule only sends buying and selling instructions to your favorite exchange. It doesn't touch your funds. It doesn't have withdrawal rights. 
So you're super safe and you can actually build an automation strategy with a few clicks. Uh, shall we go a bit over the canvas? Yes, let's do it. Sure, do, do, do so. By the way, CoinRule is, uh, is it a UK based company? Yes, the team uh, is it's seven people uh, with a headquarter in London. Um, myself, I've been in London for 11 years. Before that, actually, I was in Finland. Uh, in fact, uh, one of our investors, actually, two of our investors, and also one advisor is from Finland. Uh, we have a very Nordic culture. Uh, and then I also worked at MIT in the US, and I mentor myself as well at Google Launchpad, Vigi Startup, Startup Bootcamp. Oleg, can you introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, so actually I grew up in Frankfurt, the city where our lovely accelerator is based, um, but I moved over to the UK, uh, studied at the University of Oxford, went to work in banking at Citigroup, stayed there for a few years, uh, quit in 2016 and started with my first yeah. startup, did that for a few years and then uh, met Gabriele, met our third co-founder Zdenek and uh, caught the blockchain and cryptocurrency bug and then we started CoinRoll together. And uh, our third co-founder, the CTO Zenek, as I long mentioned, uh, is a jack of all trade. His previous company was a DG GTPR compliant login system. He's very uh, on cybersecurity. He's from Czech Republic. He was in London before, but now I moved back to Czech Republic in Pilsen, that is one hour away from Prague. And it's there where we have our technical team of three engineers. And so we have headquarters in London with an office in Czech Republic. And that's very good because uh, in terms of uh, technology, our tech team is very lean. It's very cost effective. Three engineers in the Czech Republic cost as much as one senior developer in London. So this is the full company, big presence in the East and also presence in London. In terms of uh, any question about this one, guys? No, go ahead. I just wanted to, to, to add, uh, I wanna give a shout to Rob Robson on our, on our Twitch channel because he just, uh, uh, wrote us that coin rule rules. So <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you very much nice. for that. Thank you. <laughs> and we didn't even pay him to say that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, let's go through. Um, how do you guys want to do this? Should we go through the problem, solution, um, everything? Yeah, I think this will give a high level concept to, to the guys. They, they, they take in uh, the information and uh, they're free to join and, uh, and, and okay. give their comments. Go ahead. Feel free to interrupt me at any time if you have any questions. Now let's do it in a more interactive and conversational way. Okay, so the problem. The problem uh, is very um, straightforward. Our users are usually uh, beginners in trading. They love to trade, but they would like to, to learn more. So there is a learning component that's very missing at the moment on the market. The second element is that the market, uh, it's very volatile. Sometimes, uh, you know, you can see some pump, uh, some, some coins going up and you want to take advantage of it. Some other time you want to protect your funds because the market is crashing. And at the moment, if you don't know how to code, there is no way you can build an automated script or you can build an algorithmic trading. 90% of the traders are not, are not developers. Um, and then the third element is also about uh, accessibility. So in some countries, for example, if you want to invest on Tesla stock, if you want to invest on some specific ETF or Apple stock, you cannot access it. I'm thinking about Middle East, I'm thinking about like Indonesia, I'm thinking about emerging countries. So this is the, 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 the main problem that is uh, summarized here on the left. There is some uh, uh, alternative at the moment. Uh, there is, for example, investment funds. Uh, they involve passive investing. So you put your money into a black box, you wait six months, one year, and you get your interest. That it can be also very good between 2 to 10%, depending on the fund, according also to your risk profile. Uh, that's passive investing. Our theory is that uh, people have a brain and you know, you, at least 20% of your uh, uh, savings should be traded actively, should be invested in an active way with your assumption, your correlation. And that's also much more intellectually stimulating. So there is also an entertainment gig there. So it's education plus entertainment. Then uh, in terms of accepted alternative, uh, there are like uh, some competitor, of course, there is Madrex. Uh, what happened is that two years ago, Y Combinator, we applied, they got in touch with a conversation with Y Combinator. They ended up investing in Madrex because uh, half of the team is California based and also because they are after a more kind of advanced uh, user base. So they're after, uh, they're after the 10% of uh, high frequency traders, advanced traders uh, that really do that for a job. 
and uh, that's good. There's a lot of good software there. There's a lot of overload of data. We are after the 90% of the market that is from beginner to intermediate. So that's actually the challenge to bring the power of that technology to retail investors with a very simple interface. And that's basically what Apple has been doing, Tesla has been doing. That's a new design thinking approach that is now in 2020 a must do for companies. Now, the solution we already explained, and actually we're gonna show uh, 30 seconds uh, how the, work, the product is work. If you all like, uh, can, uh, can please prepare uh, to share the screen. Yeah, 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 you can course. just quickly share the product. Um, some people call us Duolingo for automated trading, Duolingo for trading. That's because Duolingo, that's that element, element of gamification or learning and actually you also learn something. Um, and then uh, in terms of solution we're gonna show you, so I'm just gonna jump quickly to key metrics. In terms of key metrics, we are growing uh, month over month in terms of signups by 30%. Uh, and that's uh, with zero marketing spend. So our marketing strategy is very straightforward with SEO. So we have a uh, proprietary technology uh, that structure uh, thousands of thousands of landing pages that captures specific keywords. So from some key, for some keywords, we rank number one on the first page of Google. And that one drives 80% of our traffic. We have affiliation program as well. It's going very well. We have more than 20 affiliates at the moment. Uh, we also engage with crypto community and we do partnership with exchanges. And that brings us to uh, the channel that, uh, so the partnerships actually are with Kraken, for example. Kraken is one of our partner. We are launching a campaign. When we do partnership, we need a minute. Uh, it involves a uh, cross-marketing campaign or with newsletter, it involves PR, it involves technical integration, it involves also a budget. So Kraken put 10K uh, for, for our offering. We have a partnership with Binance for the broker program, Bitpanda, Liquid, et cetera, et cetera. Also with eToro X. Uh, and that's the channel how we reach the customer. In terms of uh, customer segment, there are like uh, two main customer segments, one that we are activating now and one that we are activating in the future. So the one now, it's a young professional living in, a, in a Western countries, US, uh, Europe, uh, that has a middle income. It's, uh, and it's like a bit techy so that you actually invest in, in crypto assets. So it's literally for the first time, me and Oleg, we are building a company where we can reflect ourselves in our users. And then there's the second uh, market that's very interesting, but that we can activate all, only in the future. And it's actually the B2B side. So at the moment we are full B2C FinTech product, but in the future, we will be also working with uh, family offices and funds. And in that regard, we already had two incoming leads, organic incoming leads, one from a family office in, German, uh, in Germany. Uh, it's, um, they, they, um, they manage around 100 million and their, their rationale for them is, we don't have uh, the budget, money and the capabilities to employ engineers in house and to build a, an algorithmic trade for six months. So we rather take an off-shelf product. And that's one that we are still talking with them. The second one is a, a, a blockchain fund in Australia called Blockchain Partners. Uh, we are discussing with them a 25K uh, yearly license. Uh, so that's something that uh, we, we got like, we got incoming leads, but we are, we are activating slowly, but without really focusing on them. But that's good stream of revenue for the future. The cost structures, uh, we have uh, obviously operations uh, that we are very lean, as said, because uh, we are uh, a remote team. Uh, we have some third party software, so like the payment gateways or some other small things. All the rest is 90% of the software is proprietary. Uh, but then um, in terms of server, we have like bit of computational power. So at the moment, we are still using the credit of Amazon that it will expire in six months. But it, it is estimated to cost around $500 a month. Uh, the revenue stream, we are SaaS uh, software. So uh, software as a service, we charge monthly subscription. Um, there is a reason for that. Uh, if you start charging on a uh, transaction, if you start charging on volume, if you start charging on other ways, you enter a regulatory framework. So the FCA, the financial authority in the UK can come after you and ask you to uh, register. That's something that we have uh, in our roadmap. Uh, so uh, with my previous company I applied for the FCA sandbox. It is a program where they mentor you and they actually give you a free banking license at the end. So it's very convenient. Uh, we are going to do the same next year for CoinRule. That's so that in the future we can do also other things and we can activate more uh, packaged products. But at the moment, to, to run away from the liabilities of a regulatory framework, we are charging a monthly subscription. And, and in that regard, we are a software provider. 
Uh, we have three plants. We charge uh, thirty dollars, seventy dollars, and two hundred fifty dollars. Most of the users are on the on the hobbit plan, the thirty dollar one, and the eighty dollar plan. Uh, and we are generating revenue for two thousand seven hundred dollars a month at the moment. So we have an annualized revenue of around thirty five thousand dollars. So we have uh, seven thousand five hundred users at the moment, thirty percent active. We have two thousand seven hundred dollars per month revenue, and every month our users create around 10,000 rules, 10,000 strategies. That's, that's for us is a good indicator that actually the platform is being used. It's a good indicator more than the logins because in our case, you can set up a rebalancing strategy. You can go away for three months and you can come back and check your profits, okay? So for us, it's much more important the amount of rules you create because it means that you are tweaking your, uh, your strategy and you're playing around uh, and also how much money you are, uh, you are investing. The last magic, and then uh, I open the floor for, uh, for questions, is that if you aggregate all the money that has been invested to CoinRoo, and at the moment it's around on average 2 million per month, 67% uh, of, the, of the, 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 the funds actually are in profit. That's a very good number because usually the average in the industry with the passive investing is around 55 to 60%. So we actually managed to get a 7% more. That sounds more, but in this field is a lot. Thank you very much. Great, thank you. Um, uh, excellent uh, rundown. Uh, guys, uh, my, Michael uh, from the UK, I just wanted to ask, do you know about this FCA sa uh, sandbox? sandbox? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I have some background noise here. The Kina is jumping around. So no worries, no worries. Um, of course, I've heard about uh, the FCA sandbox. I don't know um, cohort number seven, eight, nine. I don't know. Uh, very active, of course. We, uh, yeah, and there are trendsetters with this um, as uh, one of the or the first regulated offering something like this. I think there are not what, twenty regulators worldwide who have uh, sandboxes. So yes, known concept. Very good. Uh, you're associated with them, but are you in one of the cohorts or? Yeah, yeah, I was in the, I think it was the second or third cohort. The company was called Paylinko. It was a payment, digital payment company. Okay, so you were you personally, but, with, but, but not with CoinRule. Uh, no, with CoinRule, not yet, but we know how, how to apply. And so the, the idea is to apply in, uh, I think in November, they opened the new cohort. So the idea is to apply so that we can get uh, a robot advisory license in the 2021. Okay. Mm. But License would have been one of um, my questions. You mentioned Indonesia somewhere on your board. Um, so do you uh, then apply locally to each and every uh, local authority or how do you plan to do this? We are defining the strategy for the licensing passport because yes, it is a bit more complicated it need to, you know, outside Europe. There are, for example, in the US it's extremely complicated because you need to get passport in each uh, single uh, state. Uh, so at the moment we started with crypto because it's an unregulated market. And if we keep the, the pricing structure as a SaaS, so monthly subscription, we can actually also uh, trade any sort of uh, stocks just by, without the license. Then if you start having more kind of semi-automatic rules or packaged product where people put money in a black box, uh, then we need to for sure apply in, uh, in each, in each uh, geography and that will require uh, an injector of funds and also probably a dedicated person for that. Actually, I'd, I'd like to challenge you a little bit on the um, revenue stream part. I, I think the user subscription, you know, the vanilla SaaS model is that it makes sense to you at, at least at this stage. And you said you're, you're work, working on per transaction fee and that requires a license for each, each geography. I'm, I'm wondering if that is as useful as you know you make it sound what's the rationale behind it you're right i mean we are still we are still discussing that the the rationale is that um our uh, most successful uh, number if you check our metrics is actually the number of rules that people create and the number of transactions because sometimes they just do scalping they just buy and sell and sell and sell so there is a big opportunity there in terms of finances but you need to be uh, weighted against uh, what's the, has, the hurdle of going through um, getting passport for each country. So that, that, that pricing structure is, is still uh, uh, basically in discussion. We, we discuss it almost every, every week when we look at, at the metrics. 
uh, we are all really open to suggestions. So if, uh, if guys, any of you is uh, experiencing structuring pricing, uh, please, yeah, we can have also another session about that. I do have some experience from e-commerce related companies where we've offered customers a fixed monthly fee or a, a share of, of additional business that we bring in. And at least in, the, in that space, most of the customers have chosen the fixed pricing because that's something they can budget on. Exactly. And, and if, if they do a lot of business, they don't want to give a part of that to somebody else. That's yeah. the rational in e-commerce, at least. Some of our users, they also do that. Yes, they do. They actually check how much, for example, the average is like between five and 10K invested. So they are kind of retail investors, like easy going, they play around. And you know, if they buy uh, already the $30 a month, uh, it's already $360 per year on 10K, you should do the number is like 3.6%. So, you know, there's like the, the smarter one that do the, the calculation, they actually, uh, they, they think about, yeah, fixed cost versus uh, variable cost. That's actually also where it becomes interesting for institutional investors. So we spoke uh, with a few funds who currently pay to pro like to, to let's say institutional trading firms like one, one and a half percent of uh, fee of whatever amount under management uh, they have invested. And that actually comes down to huge numbers. And because they manage the funds directly of this fund, the fund doesn't even necessarily notice how much they're actually paying. Whereas with us, we can literally offer them a fixed price and they can trade with that, you know, 3 million, 4 million USD, no problem. Uh, so that's a proposition we started to test with a few uh, institutional funds. And it seems, it definitely looks appealing to them. I think there's a good opportunity for us mm. uh, on that customer segment. Yeah, it's probably worth testing at least because you have to be very careful. Yeah. If it, and uh, the transaction based fee is, is a lot more work for you and uh, yeah. it's it's more unreliable you, you cannot budget on it as easily as you can yeah uh, with a with a fixed fee but then again it it has the upside you have to figure yeah. out yourself if, if it if it's really worth it there is also another component uh, just to, to complete the pricing structure there is uh, the volume traded so we use that, we are introducing now that one in order to upsell the next plans. So with the Obis plan, you can uh, trade up to uh, 50K, uh, actually 500K and then up to 1 million, up to 3 million. So that, that small uh, element really makes people buy in the next plan. It's mm -hmm. all experiments. We really run um, experiments every two weeks. We have a dashboard for that. We, we are constantly running experiments on everything, on the call to action on the landing page, about the color of the buttons, the label on the buttons, uh, about the, the paywalls, about the pricing, so everything we are an experiment and then we wait. Very good. Yeah. Um, shall I show a quick demo of the product uh, since we are on it? Um, so, uh, yeah, so this is Coenro. This is live. Um, I've been doing quite well, so I'm also quite happy with the current market. Um, but basically, you see your dashboard where you see your different strategies and you see how they're performing. Um, but as the first step, as Gabriele was saying, you need to connect an exchange. So uh, one of the, I think, 12 exchanges we currently have connected, you have to log in, create an API key. Uh, we make it very easy, very user-friendly for people to do that. We provide them small videos. And of course, uh, we make it clear that we do not store, uh, we do not have access to their underlying funds. So we cannot withdraw uh, the funds from the exchange. Oh, I was logged in for too long, so my session expired uh, but basically uh so it's so for the user we can only we can view their account balances and we can place trades but we cannot actually move out their funds and then on the dashboard they can see also from one interface their wallets across the different exchanges so our average user has about three exchanges connected because each exchange has different coins and then, of course, in the future, you will also be able to see your uh, balances on the traditional brokers. So you could see here IG index. I have X amount in Tesla, X amount in Apple stock. Then I have on Binance so and so much in Bitcoin and so on. So that already helps users because they don't have to, to log in into each uh, exchange individually. Um, and then, of course, the main, uh, the main part is the trading interface, so the root page. Uh, again, you can select any of the exchanges you have connected or you can trade on the demo exchange where you can test your strategies before launching them live. 
you can select from one out of over 150 template strategies which have been put together by our head of trading. Uh, but we will be also opening this up to uh, advanced users to actually create their own templates and share them with the community. So this is an important part to make the whole application more social and also uh, get more people, give more people the opportunity to follow each other. And for each template, we provide an insight. We give people actually the opportunity to learn about why a certain strategy might, might be making sense. Now, of course, if you want to build your own strategies, uh, let's do something creatively simple. So I have these coins, these balances in my wallet. Let's say if any of them has price decrease by 3% within 30 minutes. So it means the market is starting to move quite quickly. I want to get out of it, sell 50% of that coin, let's say to a stable coin, uh, Binance USD. Um, and do this 50 times. Now, um, you see on the right, we give the user like a plain English summary of what the strategy would actually be doing. So they're always in control of what is actually happening. Um, now, of course, I could make this much more complicated with many more steps, but I'm just gonna launch this now. Uh, again, you get one more time the summary, you know exactly what's happening. This type of strategy protect what was the key met driver that actually protected uh, hundreds of our users when the markets crashed because even if the market was going down fast the rule continued to place the order uh, until until they were filled which actually ma made sure that our users got out got out of the market quickly um, but you can also build more advanced rules so for example if you want to use technical indicators we have uh, moving averages we have relative strength index rsi uh, so you can make this much more complicated if you want and also connect rules through an operator. Um, and then finally, if you want to buy a plan, uh, I was already showing you the pricing page earlier, but of course you can actually buy a plan through the billing uh, page. And I already have, I'm already on a trader plan, so it doesn't show uh, the, the plan I'm on now. And you can of course also pay in cryptocurrencies if you want. Uh, yeah, that's, that's going through. Of course, a lot of exciting new things are coming. Because like right now we connect to exchanges. So of course in the future, we'll also be able to let our users do arbitrage across exchanges. We'll let them do market making strategies. So we'll be gradually introducing levels of complexity, but always uh, focused on making it very easily accessible for people who haven't had previous experience with that. Uh, because that's like the core philosophy of our company. Any, any questions, anything I can show to you? Of course, uh, you can also, when you click on the strategy, you can actually see more details. What is the strategy doing? What's actually happening at the moment? You can open it up and read a bit more about it. We're making this more interactive. So users will actually be able to see how close the strategies are from triggering. So we already have a lot of users come and really just look at this and tweak the rules. So this make all of this makes it more fun and actually exciting to, to be using it. So users come back more and more. Go ahead, Miguel. Yeah, so, so um, is there an order to the rules? Um, do you have anything to manage some complexity on, on that side? If, uh, you know, I, I create a lot of rules and then uh, they might be contradictory, what kind of, <clears throat> no, uh, how, how do you go about that? At the moment, uh, with the logic, you can build around uh, 10,000 uh, logics, uh, different logics, and we excluded all the ones that contradict each other. So there is very uh, low chance that uh, a rule uh, in terms of logic kind of doesn't work. Sometimes it doesn't work in very rare cases because maybe the exchange rejects the trade uh, because um, there is some, some problem with the exchange. But in that case, we actually got get notified uh, in advance and we can actually send an email to our user when we have these cases. Mm -hmm. And we will be also, Miguel, it's actually a very good question because users ask for that, but we'll be introducing meta rules. So basically you have a rule that can control other rules so you can actually connect the rules to each other but it is relatively complex to do that in a logical way so it's something we'll be doing uh, you know in the next few months i'm just thinking about the the, the the example that you brought there because the market could drop right and then um you you were trying to you were doing a fire sale a sequential fire sale and at the same time there might be uh, some liquidity problems with the orders so the orders might not be getting through and so then at the, moment, at the same time it starts going up 
and then you have another rule for that that says when the market increases, uh, I don't know, moving average and kind of technical indicator, then you want to buy. And at the same time, um, you might be spamming somehow the exchanges um, and the orders are not getting through. So that might be, I don't know. That, that's um, a very good uh, observation. So for uh, for the first one, the first case that you said, uh, we actually uh, don't deal with the coins with the less than 10 million uh, market cap. So that was uh, just a threshold that we put arbitrary so that we don't deal with the coins with the low liquidity and then just by buying it, we pump up the price. So we, we eliminate those. Uh, and the user can actually in the setting can adjust that if you if you want to trade. Uh, and for the second one, um, what was the second one? Uh, maybe I can I, I can actually yes, respond yes, respond to that. Um, so the, the, the other thing we, we let the user do is in the operator, you can actually decide if your rule should run oh, in yes. sequence. So one step execute after another or at any time, which would mean that the first condition will be met at any time i will show you a rule that i have running it's i mean it's 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 a relatively deep question but you see i'm using here the anytime indicator so if at any time bitcoin has its price increase i want to buy but then and then at any time if it continues to increase i want to take profit or if it decreases i want to sell it so basically i want to be able to do multiple things within one strategy now because I'm literally swing trading between Bitcoin and the stable coin. Every time when this rule buys Bitcoin, I get here an error because the first part of the rule is not buying because I don't have the stable coin. However, once the second part of the rule is met, this part of the rule will execute. So the rule will wait. It will continue to try to execute. And when it is possible, it will execute. So that, that's actually, that, that, this is what allows me in this particular rule I've been running a similar strategy for a few weeks now. And that's basically what, what allowed me actually to benefit a lot in this market. So we call that parallelism. And that's something that we introduced in January with the new uh, rule page. So we have sequence parallelism or operator and also else. Okay. Um, so that's, that's the fun bit, right? So what about the boring bit? What about, um, especially if we're talking about uh, newbies, what about taxing? Do you have any partnerships uh, are you thinking about this uh, this this setup um, or this problem for 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 um, naive users it's, it's it's a good question we haven't yet any partnerships with like tax uh, companies we have been approached by a few of them now because the trades happen on the exchanges like they settle on the exchange we leave it currently to the user to sort that out but it will be an opportunity for us in the future to also sell additional services if we want. Like on a premium plan, we would be able to actually help the user potentially with some of the tax thinking. But we would only do that, of course, if you know we see that a lot of users are interested in that. Okay. I will leave the, the questions to tracking and growth to the other guys. But um, I wanted to, from the point of view of an exchange, uh, so what are the conditions that an exchange has to meet in order to uh, um, be there on your um on your list what kind of is, is it technical we, is it business what kind of uh so what's your growth potential there yeah it, it's, a, it's a mix of things so we do a strict diligence so we said no already to few exchanges it starts usually with the branding and with the reputation in the community uh, we are part of most of the community on slack telegram conferences so we know more or less which brands are good and which brands are scammers uh, and then it passes on also in the api documentation if it's clean if it's well written if it actually works for example, a few cases like Bitrex, a good brand, but the technical, the technical part is not, not there yet. Uh, so we had like, so much problem in, in connecting the API. We just dropped it at the end because it was too much work for, for nothing. Uh, so we have like a se se several steps that we follow. And also part of it, uh, it can get speeded up uh, by doing a partnership. So when they do a partnership, uh, when they give back uh, some, uh, some PR, they give back some technical support, then we speed up in front of the pipe uh, their, their, their exchange, um, especially if it also they put some budget on it. So these are the criteria. Uh, we get now, we also start getting a lot of incoming uh, requests from smaller exchanges. Now we're introducing a fee for them. So we ask $950 for them, uh, for us to integrate them, because at the end of the day, we bring new traffic to them and we bring new trades. So they either give us a kickback, like for example, with Binance, we get a kickback. Uh, and then with the uh, Bitpanda, with Liquid, 
to get a kickback or uh, they pay actually for the integration. But the big one, we just go integrate uh, them ourselves. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Miguel already mentioned growth. Mm -hmm. uh, can you el elaborate on your growth rates, the number of users and revenues, etc.? Yeah, so uh, uh, signups at 27,500. Uh, uh, these are the registered uh, users on the platform. We have a uh, growth of 30% uh, per month, uh, month over month, that's an average. Uh, in terms of actual traffic to the website, we had uh, something like 50% increase. So last month was around 6,000 uh, visits. Now we have uh, 8,900 visits as per today. So it's increasing a lot. Uh, I, I, I'm, I expect that's because we just released new landing pages in seven different languages. That's why we're also getting some uh, customer chat in Korean. And we don't have to reply to that. So we need to use Google Translator quite a lot. Uh, just, to add, just, just maybe quickly to add in terms of the growth. So right now, if you Google things like automated trading, Coinbase, or automated trading, Kraken, or Binance, or automated trading Ethereum, we're usually number one on Google, which is really like what, what drives a lot of the traffic to us. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a very nice script that we have that actually already few agencies, marketing agencies asked us to sell them, <laughs> but we are not in, the, in that business. So we are really focused on our company. So we just keep this tech, property technology for landing pages for ourselves. In terms of revenue, they grow around 10% month over month. Uh, so till uh, March, we had very linear. So more visit means more revenue. So we went up to $2,700. In April, I can see that now they're diverging a little bit. So we have a lot of visitors, but the revenue are being the same. So we need to know to analyze why is that. Maybe it can be just that the channel got saturated because usually marketing channels have like a saturation point. Uh, and then we need to activate some paid marketing. In terms of paid marketing uh, for crypto, uh, it's slightly tricky because we cannot go straight on Facebook and AdWords because they, they block crypto companies. So we are now uh, having uh, alternative indirect strategies. Uh, so we can now advertise on Facebook by this small trick to do in order to be able to connect. So we did our first campaign uh, last week, small one. Uh, we did a newsletter campaign. So adver our advertising into the newsletter, that works very well because people that read newsletter are actually our very intellectually active and they could be potentially our customer base. So if you go in a tech newsletter, that's perfect for us. And for that one, the cost per click was uh, $1.5. So that was pretty good. Uh, um, one thing that works for us is also influence marketing, but that's very expensive. So, so far we have done it uh, just because we've got <coughs> some free, free, uh, free uh, participation in some YouTube channels. Uh, but that will be a channel that uh, with investment we will activate massively. Influence marketing on YouTube, Inst live Instagram, Twitch. Yes, uh, influencer marketing is... Uh is uh, something that Accelerator Frankfurt is building now uh, with the user base that we're accumulating on Twitch. And uh, hopefully we can become influencers and help uh, our cohort companies uh, uh, grow for sure. Uh, there's already, you already have one, uh, <laughs> one, one user who is totally in love with you. Uh, I don't know who he is, but uh, Leon is getting engaged with him. Nice. Yeah, we get we, we've been getting a lot of this is one of the things we like the most. We're getting a lot of love from our users because we have people who come who are used to some of those much more complex trading interfaces. And the first thing they tell us they come into Coinro, we had people compare it to using an iPhone, for example. And we love that because that's kind of the, the triggers we want to create in people. Like it's something that's slick, that's easy to use, that makes their life 10x easier like that's kind of the emotions we're trying to drive in the users and we're definitely seeing a lot of that happening like w w i mean we are collecting every day a tremendous amount of user feedback like i don't know if you saw but down here on the right um our users can actually chat with us we're literally per week we are chatting with over 50 users every week and we have a very active telegram community as well uh, so we're very engaged with them and basically we see, not only we go out and talk to them actively, but we also get all the inputs from them. So we almost like, we know precisely what are the things users ask for. It's just a question of like executing on some of them because of course there's limited resources uh, and so on. 
we've raised uh, last year we raised uh, 250k uh from two NGO investors to Giacono's one of them and also MKB Bank uh which is one Hungarian bank who joined their fintech accelerator but apart from that money we've basically the whole team the whole company and the whole uh channels sales channels we've built completely on on that funding uh so yeah. I, i think we've done pretty well i mean b- before the accelerator in 2019 uh, february we had no product uh basically almost no team no revenue no users so now we have all of that with the, i think with 250k uh, usd uh, it's pretty good achievement uh also yeah. to tell you the full part of the story uh because startup it's good stuff and bad, bad side as well um the we also get we get a lot of love but also a lot of hate and the hate usually comes from uh people that comes on the platform because they were expecting something that was said on the landing page because landing page tries to capture as many keywords as possible but then they come on the platform and maybe we don't yet have that uh, arbitrage functionality for example that it's coming in three months we don't have the full back testing available yet uh, so there are some 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 small bugs of course but there are also some features that are there and they are, they really want them like arbitrage every day we get two three people asking for arbitrage um, so we just now need actually additional funding to to develop the, the 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 scope we know w- w- what's needed on average uh we also do three four interviews uh, per week one to one with the users which are half an hour long on on conference call we take all the all the all the research we take the user needs they go through a specific process i mean my background is in ux and product so that was my bread and butter so they go to a specific process very systematic and then we solutionize them with a wireframe design and then after we got implemented so before actually it goes into design implementation there is a big work done uh, by Oleg and Ruben um, and uh, that are more on the implementation side they are more on the research side at the moment uh, and Ruben it's our head of trading that we did mention uh, is the one that was working for Fineco bank he was teaching high net worth individual how to trade uh, now he's with us and is the expert mother uh, he knows everything about trading One, one more interesting thing to add maybe Gabriele about your background so Gabriele actually in helped to build uh one of the leading trading platforms out there from UBS Neo UBS Bank yeah so UBS Neo uh, it's uh, it was supposed to be the competitor of few other platforms now it's still a good market share so yeah, I always worked in innovation labs of banks uh, HSBC Lloyds UBS and uh, also in Finland I was working at Activark and went to work uh, for Nokia to Activark I think we spoke so much. <laughs> yes, um, it seems like you do have uh, your hands full uh, already with uh, excellent ideas uh, to develop your platform further. But from uh, revenue generation, you did mention a uh, future upsell. You may want to uh, offer to your subscribers. Um, do you have already some pipeline of these ideas in uh, coming on soon or not so soon? We have some idea, but the short answer is no. Uh, the, we have ideas, uh, but they are not structured uh, properly um, in a way that we can envision in the next three years what the, the revenue stream can be. We have, of course, projection, we have financial plan, we are happy to share the data room with everything. Uh, but uh, I think one thing that we also should get with the next investment, it's a, a sales manager uh, that does uh, the more the heavy work in terms of sales strategy for the long term. Um, so you know, we, we, we are, of course, we have the idea of selling, for example, uh, semi-automatic funds. Uh, so, for example, the rule that you have seen, some part of it could be actually a small black box. So there's a secret sauce that you don't know what is it, and that can be sold, for example. There is the marketplace that uh, features the copy trading functionality. So already now we, are, we have a community of 10 super traders. They can build uh, very cool rules. People can rent them out or buy from them. We get a cut of the transaction. So there are a few other revenue streams we can activate, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's still a funding. Yeah. And j- just to add to that, like in the, let's say, more immediate term, so we, we track all the funnels, all the conversion funnels from registration to connect exchange, from connect exchange to create a rule, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we can kind of almost isolate where we have drop-offs. So there are a lot of small things we are also doing to actually improve those conversions. And one thing that Gabriele mentioned, we just introduced were the volume volume limits per plan. Like in February, we had one trader. He basically by himself traded 2 million uh, and he had a plan for $39. Um, like we could have easily upsold him with like a volume limit um, and also the back testing. So the back testing will be a very, very powerful thing 
uh, and that will be something that we'll be only including in the higher price plans. So that will be a good way to upsell the users. Thanks. Okay. Hi, yeah. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. yes, go ahead, Michael. And I think I can even share the video now again. Does mm -hmm. that work? Uh, anyway, um, I noted down a few questions and um, you, you mentioned a few numbers, like 270,000 uh, registered users. Did I get that right? And six or 8,000 active ones? It's uh, 7,500, 7.5K right. 7 registered. And around, ah, okay. yeah, and around 25 to 30% active. Uh, and that's something that we are really working hard to increase. Uh, that's probably our uh, our problem at the moment, increase the retention and also the way we, we see at retention. Okay, and the 2,700 uh, revenue, from how many users is this? And uh, what's the percentage of the recurring revenue? At, here? at the current, it's uh, around 55. Now, I don't know this month. Uh, Oli, can you check on Mixpan? It's 55 yes, uh, recurring uh, from last month. I don't know this month how many more we had. So we, we have, in, to, in total, we have right now about 70 paying users. Um, we have, we currently, our churn rate is around 28%, uh, which has been actually going down. So it's not, not bad. Uh, so our paying users stay with us like relatively long term. Also because about 15% of them purchase an annual plan. Mm -hmm. And of course, th that's great because that means we have one year to really make them happy yeah. and convince and them. And it's $360 straight in the bank account, so it's good. So we yeah. really push okay. for the annual plan. And all that uh, revenue is from business that is uh, possible without license. Yes, exactly. Unless tomorrow the FCA comes and arrests us, that's always possible. <laughs> but uh, unlikely because there are, of course, other. Yeah, yeah. We, we had actually a couple of sessions with the legal advisor, and uh, I mean, they, they, they validated our, our strategy. Uh, yeah. Actually, one, one lawyer who is also an advisor for crypto and blockchain, specifically at Techstars in London, he was the one who gave us uh, basically the feedback and the review on this. Yeah. So we are relatively confident uh, that we are, we are okay. I have two okay. goals in life, not to die and not to go to prison. The rest <laughs> is all good. <laughs> well, make sure it's all about trust eh? also in this business. So, uh, and uh, obviously this would not be good. So, so good for trust building. <clears throat> but anyway, um, how many, how big is your target group uh, of those heavy traders, even those who then want to model their own strategies? So uh, in terms of like the, the assessment of the number of active crypto traders, there's a study that we use to assess that, which says that there are 35 million active crypto traders worldwide. Uh, that's based on data also of users on Binance and Coinbase, which are the two largest exchanges, but also it measures just the, the turnaround and the movement of crypto assets. Now, let's assume that out of those 35 million, uh, let's say that like, 25% are maybe too advanced for us, 25% are not sufficiently advanced for us, um, which would say we have about 50% of that. So let's assume roughly 50 million of an immediate market that we can reach. Uh, but of course, we are also expanding into non-crypto assets. It's something we haven't like spoken too much about, but that's actually a very also big factor because we have a lot of our users, they trade crypto, but they also trade other assets or they're starting to get into that. So of course, if we look at users who trade, let's say on IG index, but don't trade crypto, the opportunity becomes, becomes larger. But as an initial target market, we are looking at around 50 million active crypto traders. And do you have a segregated number for Europe or for Germany? Um, we do. I don't have it in my head right now. I'm happy to share that uh, anytime mm. after. Uh... Number seems very high to me, but uh, I'm not a specialist in this field. I would like to emphasize that. But uh, in Germany, at least, they are said to be a target group of heavy traders for stocks um, of 30,000. <clears> so if you compare that to the figure that uh, you mentioned, um, either this one is too low or yours uh, is pretty high, or these are all the people who are carved out by regulation. Um, yeah. it, it's, it's an interesting question because I wouldn't, like a lot of our users, they are not actually heavy traders. Let's say they trade maybe 5K, 6K on a monthly basis. That's, let's say like an average user, maybe 10K. Um, I would say the heavy users are those who are really like professional day traders. In a way, what we are doing with Coinro is we're making 
automated trading more mainstream. So in a way, we're actually reaching the people who trade, you know, twice per week or maybe three times per week. So okay. it's, slightly, it's a slightly different... Uh, people, if- uh, people like me, basically. Yesterday, I mentioned that I, I, I buy and sell once a week. And uh, uh, I have an account with CoinRule, but sadly enough, I didn't put my strategy and I missed the jump today. So Bitcoin went up 5% or 6% today and I totally missed it. Uh, so uh, I think Oleg, I saw your strategy online when you showed it. So you must have done well today. <laughs> <laughs> I, can share that. I can share that with you. Um, uh, yes, Michael, just you are, because you asked in terms of active crypto traders in different continents, that's what I can, what I can provide. I'm happy mm. to share the, the report with you. It's from CH and Co. Um, I mean, it, it's, 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 pretty reliable, credible source. And it's from last year, but you know, the trading volume in crypto actually grew 50% last year. So I would expect this number to have grown. Um, I think there's a lot of exciting opportunity in specifically this crypto market, which few people really see because they're not necessarily, uh, you know, for, for following it that closely. Uh, so there's, I think, a lot going on there. Okay, so I understood a bit better now uh, than your target group. Uh, What about uh, competitors? How many competitors are there? And um, how big are their marketing budgets according uh, to yours? I mean, you mentioned online marketing, um, where you seem to be doing good on Google. But um, the more money there is in the game, uh, the better the results there. So uh, eToro, for example, can basically flush a lot of smaller competitors out. What is your answer to that? Um, we have uh, one minute, guys. So, yeah. <laughs> so qu- quickly, <laughs> accurate. Itoro, uh, Itoro, actually, we met Yori, the founder and CEO, and uh, you know we are working with the Itoro X, their cryptocurrency uh, branch, for like almost one year now. They didn't manage to launch uh, an exchange. I don't know how it's possible. They're like, they have so much API. cash. The exchange is like, but the API, yeah. It's... Yeah, I mean, they, 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 they launched it, but not successfully on the API. So, yeah, I mean, the exchanges, I think, we, we, we also met the Coinbase guys and Binance. Uh, I think they don't have interest in entering this market, first of all. They, they, they prefer to, to um, kind of build up the ecosystem and to amplify the ecosystem. Secondly, in terms of competitor, uh, there is uh, Shrimpy. For example, we met them in California, in Mountain View. Very nice guys, four of them, they got 500K. Their, um, their gig is more about getting the data from the user and selling it uh, business to business. So they're on that, on that, on that case. Madrex uh, and uh, also uh, Crypto Hopper, they are more for experienced traders uh, because they have many more indicators that they're more difficult. I would say the Trade Santa as well is much more difficult. So there is probably only uh, one that is only like the Czech company, um, the new Czech yeah. company that's very similar to us. And they are very small as well. Uh, so uh, I think I, I didn't see yet like a huge uh, whale coming in and putting on a huge marketing budget um, that in our case can be very easy because uh, you know we don't have much funds. So, um, so Look, I, I um, that can happen. Just to wrap up, because uh, we're out of time. Um, when we did our due diligence about before accepting coin rule to the accelerator, uh, we did look at the, at the competitive landscape. And we opened accounts also with all the competitors just to compare. Um, and by far, uh, CoinRule has the best user interface out there. They're earlier stage probably than a few others, but, but they have a great user interface and, uh, and a great SEO. Their secret sauce is the, also lies in the SEO. Maybe we should be on the first. Yako is an investor in e-commerce and he knows how important uh, this is. Um, I think in this session, you guys really proved that uh, you're, you're on top of things and uh, still early, early days. I will be very happy to connect you with some of the mentors and vice versa. Um, unfortunately, we ran out of time. Uh, guys, the mentors, please uh, remember to send me uh, emails with, with your summaries. And uh, uh, after these mentor sessions are over by next Tuesday, uh, we can go on one-on-one meetings. So. Thank you very much, uh, CoinRule, Ole, Gabriel. We are going to commercial break and there's one more company coming. I ask the mentors, please stay on this call. Sure, thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Ole Gibberstein, one of the founders of CoinRule. I'm originally from, well, the former Soviet Union slash Moldova, but I grew up in Frankfurt, the very city where our accelerator is based. 
And uh, one fun fact about myself, I once saved a kidnapped girl. Uh, long story. Um, I became an entrepreneur because everything else was just quite boring. I worked in banking. I didn't feel challenged. Uh, I wanted something much more fast paced and uh, entrepreneurship uh, was the route. I tried out different things. And then for years now, I've been uh, in the crypto and blockchain space and building with an amazing team, uh, CoinRule. And I really, I'm really looking forward to the Frankfurt Accelerator. It's the first time we as CoinRule are actually in a real crypto blockchain program. Uh, looking forward to engage with the team, meet the mentors, and also the fact that it's from Frankfurt makes me super happy.